and we're live. Welcome to the anniversary sale for MISC. You'll notice I had to change the title <laughs> because of what happened yesterday. But anyway, we're back and we're dressed as mafia slash Yakuza people because it's Mutashi Industrial something Musashi concerned. Musashi Industrial and Starflight Concern. Oh, Starflight. That was what I couldn't think of. Starflight Concern. Yeah, so... It's written on the floor right below your feet. Oh, man. If I could only read, that would be so great. Oh. Oh, it's well. right on the floor. Yeah. Shame I can't read. I can't read it at all. How do I read this? You know... Um, it's like... Okay, anyway. Jokes not funny. Anyway, moving on. Mutashi <laughs> Industrial start my concern. Right, should we go down and just start? We'll we'll just go straight into it. I think. Sure. Um, yeah. Misc, I think, is uh, a very stable manufacturer. I think, uh, I think it, everyone I know at least owns one of their ships. So, unless they only own one ship, if you know what I mean. Um, it's one of my favorite manufacturers, honestly, aesthetically wise. Yeah. Well, different strokes for different folks. Um, what have you done with your jacket, uh, Cyrus? No, it's, uh, awesome. it's all good. Nothing. All right, so no. the prospector. Dyson, if you want to come and stand in front of the prospector. Um, I'm not a fan of the advanced starters. I think that's no secret at this point. Um, do a 12 for me, Dyson, because you got that jacket bug again. Um, I think this one specifically... Oh, my God, what's going with your jacket, Dyson? Do a spin. <laughs> it's terrible. Anyway, um, it's like up around your chest. I don't even know how you mentioned it. <laughs> um, sorry, I'm thinking and talking and it's not working. Uh, I, I think this ship specifically, I'm a bit worried about how it relies so much on another cargo ship to be fully effective, um, which in my mind doesn't make it a true starter because all the starters seem to be very independent. Um, do you guys feel the same or... i actually disagree with you on it and it's only for one very specific reason sure i feel like this ship is actually really good for uh not just individuals but for orgs because this ship will be able to go places the orion cannot yep and even if you get a medium vessel this mm. it still may be better to have just you no, know a I, couple I can, small I can vessels see that. places i, I mean i think this is a ship that I, won't outgrow its usefulness also because if you have a large mining operation going on in an asteroid belt this ship can bounce around and find where the good concentrations of ore are and then direct the orion according uh, i see it more may, as a maybe one, maybe but I, land ships. I i'm talking more as a solo vessel it definitely is not a solo vessel like the other starters mm. like you look at the vulture right. as an example i can totally see you going out and just doing that solo this because uh, yeah, of the way that fill this very quickly fill the cargo hold so yeah well you I can only you. fill the four bags that are on it and then you have to go because as soon as you have to drop the bags you need another ship so yeah yes. well i could see what osiris uh, sorry what dyson said being totally true the ability to actually do this with an org i can see that and i actually see it also you can do this in my opinion with a individual uh, just doing it, you're not going to be as effective, but yeah. this is one of those starters I feel like is actually one of the few starters in my personal opinion is a great one because you it's still going to be relevant with a group and it's going to be relevant as an individual mm -hmm. unlike a lot of the others, which I really don't see like the Vulture being relevant comparatively to so I basically think, the reclaimer i think we can all agree that we have different thoughts on this ship <laughs> yeah. and um I, I i'm going to put it in the wait and see basket but because me i've got lots of big red flags for this ship personally um my issue with the ship is really i don't i don't yeah. find the mining gameplay mechanic to be that rewarding yeah. yet it is the tier zero implementation but i i'm hoping that when we see other professions they're a little bit more stimulating than yeah. what we get from mining so, well, I think they'll all be kind of at this level to start with, and they'll just improve from there. Um, so, yeah. All right, moving on. Uh, the most, probably most, con I don't know, you guys can correct me if you think I'm wrong, probably the most controversial ship uh, in this lineup today, mm. the Reliant. Today. It's in a really it's... bad spot right now. Yeah, really it's definitely bad. the most overpriced starter. Yeah, but it's cool as shit looking. 
as in like yes. just the way it takes off it reminds me of the slave 2 from star wars um it's got zion tech um it looks like a floating sail um the it's, new flight model will probably help it yes it possibly. will two two person it's the smallest two person craft i think or the cheapest i should say at the least um yeah i i think though it, as a cargo hauler it's really lacking like uh when you can get a hundred eye that has them as much cargo or i think it's only got slightly more than the, the aurora or even less i don't know i'd have to check that again but yeah. to me they need to be allowed to put you at least put cargoes in the wings like why not just let them use that space mm -hmm. and if that means it's got to get a bit fatter in the wings then so be it or why don't they do something much like the um the mustang you know how it kind of sits up in it why can't it just sit in the back of the wings or something and you know yeah. um be exposed well, to space that i'm fine with that i just wish they would fatten out the back because one of the big things i was thinking is this he ship would big really booty. have a nip confirmed dyson likes a big booty <laughs> <laughs> But when you think about it, if, if you actually fatten out the back, this is this will is this, become you're talking the back here, smallest. Back here. You're, you're talking back here. Because it does uh, it yes. does waste a lot of space for that ramp. I, I've got to agree with you on that. Like like look at look at the width of that ramp. That's half the that's half the width of the cargo bay. But if mm -hmm. you enlarge it, you could probably put a dragonfly in here. If you just pu push this out just a little bit and made it maybe a little bit wider, yep. and that would actually be yep. make this a that great. Would, th yeah, that would help it out a lot as a starter. That would give it a unique role to carry yes. a. Uh, yep, you I'm can now not take your ship. Where you need to go? It's gonna be. It has. You can take a friend, and it's also with these new thrusters. The new flight model. This will make this ship really awesome. It'll be like an entry level Xeon Scout. Mm -hmm. You might say, but with actual versatility. <laughs> um, I also don't think it would hurt it too much to even make. I'm just trying to see if it would work in my head. Hold on. You might, yeah, might, might start to run into troubles. But I was gonna say you could almost make it higher as well, as in the height of the, the cabin. As, but you'd have to move the engines out a little bit, obviously, just for it to do that. The cargo bin scale up a little bit, and the size of the opening needs to get bigger. Well, it's meant to have ship. eleven cargo or something, and it's only got eight, so it's just yeah. yeah. I also think it could benefit maybe from the use of some better weapons. Because then, yeah. it, then it'll be kind of on par with the Avenger at that point in time. Probably the one or I'm the scared about most is the Tanner, because the Tanner just seems totally undergun for a combat ship. Um, yeah. And I still don't see how they're going to fit a bed in here. Like this is meant to be a science lab. How the hell are they going to fit a bed in here? And a science lab. I'm actually choking going in. I've died once already being near the ship today, guys. Just letting you guys know. So I'm trying let's to stay back away. Oh, me. God. Let's get out of here. Yeah. I walked under that wing and it killed me. Like, literally between that rock just here. And it killed me. So, yeah. But, yeah, I feel like this ship has a lot of potential. I know they're... I, I'm pretty sure they're going to be doing a rework soon. Well, they said they don't want to do a rework. They just want to fix it up. But they've said that about multiple little ships. So right. we'll, They're going... The, the base one's going live, flight ready, or... No, it already is flight ready. Yep. The, the rest of them are 3.5, I think. So that's, so, that's early couple. next year. So yeah, we'll I will say that Mako is the one I'm most excited about because I just like the idea of the news van. Like, imagine us doing a stream mm -hmm. where we actually have like a news van and we you can actually stream via Spectrum or something. Mm. Yeah. All right, I'm excited about the Sen because it. The description of the page, I know it's supposed to have a science lab, but it yep. sounds almost like an exploration vessel. And I'm just curious about science gameplay and how yeah, that me, me too. differentiates from exploration. We'll get that to in a little bit because those ships are not here. But I do want to talk about the Endeavor. Um, On to the Razor. Now, I know Dyson owns one of these. I used to. I used to. I, I think, quite honestly, I, like, I'm not, it's not a secret. I'm not a fan of racing ships, so I'm not going to hide it anymore. But I think this one's <laughs> potentially got some real-world benefit as a scout, a stealth scout, to go in before a, a fight, stealth in, scout out, find what's there, and get out. Um, and it's not mm. a it's not a high risk because it's just one person in a really fast ship. And um, if you could also, <coughs> excuse me, put some scanners on it, that would be awesome. Mm -hmm. My only concern this is... about this, these ships is their cost because if you look at like the m50 and i know i got the ship that i was comparing to wrong but if you look at the cutlass like 
Cutlass versus M50 actual in-game cost. Now just imagine this ship at mm. as high as it is. I'm yeah. just like, you could get a Constellation Taurus. Yep, exactly. There, there are a lot of ships priced at just <laughs> price points that just don't make any sense. So, like, it just doesn't make sense unless these in-game are going to be worth that. It just yep. doesn't make sense to have that equality level. And why would... You, I understand you want to play it with it, but it's just a buying game ship, in like, my opinion. Yeah, and, and and that's my main concern with racing ships. They're only going to be used on special events, and I don't see people continually racing in the game, I just, as in every day of the week. I think it's like a weekend activity. I um, disagree, right. actually. Yeah, well, okay, you can disagree, but that's can just because you're not ha a lot of games can every day, but actual races will probably be every week on the weekend. Yeah, because most people have got races? kids. Most people have got kids in that. The scramble races yeah. is just something they're throwing at us to keep us busy because we've got nothing to do. <laughs> Let's be honest. Um, this is a great looking ship, but it's got a really poor cockpit view. Also, if you're thinking about getting one, it's the same thing with I'm other racing ships. Like, take a look. what do you see them actually doing in the long term? Like, I question a lot of the reasons to buy those ships, but that's just me. I'm um, just gonna say right here with the stealth one. Like, the biggest missed opportunity with the stealth one is, in my opinion, di not ditching the weapons and putting, mm. like, a room to have, like, a weapon rack or something under there. Yeah, okay. Let's move on to the Freelancer series. Um, because this thing's had a checkered past. I've loved and hated this thing all at the same time. Um, I've owned every version except the Max at one point. Um, I think it, it it's the thing... It, the, it's the epitome of MISC. It is the MISC ship. It's When people say MISC, it's the first ship I think of. Um, yep. I think it is a great little ship for what it is. It is a budget ship, but just like he mentioned uh, previously, um, Dice mentioned about the uh, Taurus, when you bring the Taurus into the mix, I start to question this ship at all. Um, really? Max is the one that really pushes into the question of it's close enough to the Taurus, it carries a little bit less, but it's the same price currently though, isn't it? My, my... But it's a... Go ahead. No, it's a little bit less. But it's a, it's just a really nice package for a ship and it might be a little bit better on the landing, taking off and it jump point wise, we don't know if it'll be better going through jump points. Well we've got a few people in chat. Hey True, nice to see you man. And Sakayako Sokai Yako. I think I got that right. Mm. Son Tokyo. Son, oh, I don't have the Chinese accent. I use. Oh, Tokyo. <laughs> oh, oh. Anyway, um, my favorite version of this is the Der. Um, I think it is going to be, uh, especially considering it's meant to be the largest ship that can go through a small jump point. But I, we've heard things recently that might not be the case anymore. But um, if it is the case, then it definitely is probably one of the best explorers in the game. It has um, increased jump drive size so it can jump further it's also got increased fuel uh capacity pods so it can also go even further again um it, it gives up a bit of cargo for that but it also gets scanners one of the cool things though about the smaller explorer ships is this actually has cargo so to put it up against say something like the terrapin terrapin can find stuff but it can't do anything with it can't carry anything yeah so um I, I, I could honestly see, and I know this is going to probably sound controversial to some people, but I can honestly see this going with a Carrick because it can go through the small jump points and, and do a bit of exploration on the other side where the Pisces, yes, it can go through the wormhole, but I don't. it doesn't have a jump drive, so it won't be able to explore the other side of the wormhole, as an example. It would just be going, oh, it's here, <laughs> but it can't go That's anywhere. a really good point. I uh, really good point plus two it also can defend itself on the other side i yep. don't think the pisces good either. might well th th i think that's another thing of the terrapin you could be able to send the terrapin through and it's got that rough exterior so if there is bad shit it can go Oop, okay bye now and just turn around and, <laughs> and leave um yeah i think uh someone just said evening gentlemen that's really interesting because it's actually about two what time is it now but two, two, 20 past 2 in the afternoon for me. What time is it for you, gents? Uh, around 10.20. Yeah, so it's a, it's a truly global game, this one. Yeah. Um, yeah, so for me, the Dur is the only real option. I think I, I, I personally move on to the Taurus. I do very quickly want to talk about something that they talked about on the video about Mist today, 
And I brought it up when they first brought this current version of the Freelancer out, and I honestly can't understand why it hasn't been... It's a, such a simple fix, and it's this bloody turret. Oh, Right? Yeah. <clears throat> you have to not put cargo in this spot. It actually says here, don't put cargo here if you want to use the turret, right? And you actually walk... I'm choking again. You walk down these sides, right? So the simplest fix for me is, why don't you put the cargo on the sides and then walk straight down the middle? And that way it won't ever affect the turret. Mm. Well, why don't you just make it a remote turret because All you that. have the tech All to that. do that. Yeah. And, and the that. turret has an issue. And if you want to back up here, uh, back up to where about I'm standing right now, mm. one of the issues I have with this turret is it, it it's weak. It's not really going to be good defensively, but it's not high enough. It's got enough two size far... twos. It's not exactly terrible. It, it's not well, exactly but... brilliant. But it's not exactly terrible. But it's, I think Jason's it's, it's, talking about line of sight. All right, you can't oh, yeah. see something. It's it's designed though when you're below. running. That's what that turret's for. It's when you're running to get them off your tail. That's what that turret is. It, 100%. Right, but all they have to do is is strafe oh. downwards to about this elevation mm -hmm. relative to your ship, and you can't, you can't hit them with yeah. that turret. You, so that is that that does lend credence to the remote turret then, because if you had a second one at the on the bottom, they could just both shoot at it, couldn't they? Well, yeah. and. And this turret, if it was just a little bit farther back and remote, and you didn't have to worry about getting in, it would provide, in my opinion, the even... greatest service. Is oh, think you think it needs the, to be right uh... back here, do you? You reckon it needs to be moved back to right to the back of the ship, like so, like here? Yeah, there's a little okay. thing yeah. above the See that door. little little, yeah. little lip right there? Mm. If it's right there, it provides a valuable service to the ship, and, mm. oh, I can defend my... I, this... this ramp here think of the millennium falcon like you yeah. know they're loading up oh, yeah, yeah. there and it gives and it gives not only a little bit of a defensive bonus up there but it now gives you the ability to actually defend your ramp and everything while you're loading cargo yeah the, the other thing is if it was um <clears throat> like almost 45 degree mounted on the back here you could have it shoot down and shoot back along the ship so you could actually yeah. have it so you could actually i'm just thinking then if you only was able to have one turret but i think this ship is remnants of that original World War II in space concept, so they want that feeling of man turrets. Um, and I think out of all the turrets I've seen, even like it, Disco really broke broached the subject. This is a really hot topic. This turret when it comes to this ship, um, and on the video today, they I think he kind of was like, "We need to fix this ship." That was him trying to say that in my book. Do you guys kind of? think i'm overreacting to what he said or no i think you i think that the, what we just talked about would be a simple fix i think we identified the the so need for it multiple ways it can well, be fixed um i just hope they address it i think my biggest concern is they know that that would mean that they would have to remodel some of the stuff and that's the biggest problem well yeah. riddick points out that it's <laughs> properly placed for blind spots uh, yeah. but i would like to state there's a difference between having blind spots and then just not actually really serving any good purpose. I mean, right. it's not far enough back to provide decent back cover, but still have some. Yeah. But I think I think spots. at the same time, you know, when you talk, you guys are talking about like, oh, ship would just fly lower. You can roll your ship. It it it, it would just mean you need the guy in the turret has to go roll the ship. You know, it it, it well, does cr provide that gameplay of communication and i know that sounds really weird when i say it like that but if you're communicating and working together you're going to get a lot more done um a lot of people can't see past a solo thing you've got to look at the connection between a driver and the turret gunner at the same time and and if you take the rolling aspect into play all of a sudden that turret is almost 360 degrees, if you know what I mean. Because he can just roll the ship. And if you roll the ship, it doesn't affect your speed, so you can still travel in a straight line. But it still has a ridiculous blind spot. I still oh, can't be I, I, I don't I disagree. Be I don't disagree, but what I'm trying to say is... Uh, I don't like, know. I'm right here and I can finally see it. Yeah. My whole point is you can still... If, if the driver works with the gunner, you can get to the things you need to get to. It's not impossible. I, I, I don't disagree it's badly positioned, though. I'm just playing devil's advocate, if you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, should we move on to the staff errors? Yes. All right. So, Some staff of your error favorite ships. And staff error G. Oh, they're not my favorite, but I think they are going to be one of the most money-making ones in the game, honestly. 
potentially. Where are you guys? I'm just we went in, to the Star Fair. I'm just over at the normal Star Fair. Um, yeah. Main difference between the Star Fair and the Star Fair Gemini or Star Fair G, as I usually refer to it, is they are the same in every way except this has more armor, so it makes the ship heavier. It has. It comes with mi more missiles on the front. They've stated in uh, not Q and A's but videos previously. It also still comes with the refinery and the fuel scoop, but you have to apply it. So you don't have to go out and buy those on the day, like like you wouldn't have to go earn them and then re-put them on. It actually comes with both sets. Um, so mm. the better one is the Star Ferro G. I just hate the bloody color of the thing inside and out. Mm. Um, this has so the Star Ferro, the normal Star Ferro has like orange aesthetics, and this one's got I think yellow on the inside. Um, but I could be completely wrong. I can't quite remember. I'll have to have a look in both to to remember. Now you guys keep teleporting. Yeah. Well, I the big issue like I have the with the Star that... Fair... Oh, continue, Osiris. I was, I was going to say, I, I like about the ship yeah. that you can simultaneously transport uh, cargo cargo and fuel cargo. Hmm. I, I, I'm actually surprised it's got such a cargo, big cargo bay that it does. Like for 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 it being the unique fuel tanker, why does it also do fuel? I think if this if this ship was like coming out now, it wouldn't be coming with all the cargo. It would just be this, like it'd be like a little living section. And I want to point out how buggy the server is today. I think it's very clear. Yeah, it's extremely buggy. Yeah, like well, um, these guys are watching me at the moment run up a ramp. Because I'm it technically is, flying. It is such a good ship, but my biggest issue, and this is the reason I, do, I really do not like this ship, is it has the absolute worst interior layout I have ever seen. But it was the first one ever done. And that's the thing. So can you, if you look at the difference, so the other one is way more military colored, like green, yellow, and that. Yeah. This has got, yes, it's got this insane orange accents, but it looks kind of plain. I also think because of the insane layout up the top that's very maze-like, it's actually easy to find your way around in the Gemini because it's got, it doesn't have the flat, flat black and white uh, color tone. But yeah, I, I feel like the, the, this ship needs, in my personal opinion, a interior rework. Yeah, just 100%. to make it a little bit more logical, because it may it come may... down the line. It may, may in fact come down the line. You can learn your way around it, but it's still. Well, my my biggest problem with the ship is there's just so many corridors that do nothing, in the layout. Like, and I think it's because they were learning how to do stuff. It's like... also tough navigating inside when you snap two ladders and there's so many ladders that are just right there on the corridor yep and you don't mean to climb up and all of a sudden you're personally i think it's a ship that could actually benefit from an elevator so and my personal that's been my personal fix for the ship for a while so if you know where the um like here uh i don't know where you boys are now i'm at the door leading into the uh the 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 front of the ship the why did you bridge. fly? Your bridge, man. I had it right at the end of my time. I couldn't remember it. Um, I had to go outside. I was choking inside. Yeah, oh, I'm not dead, but I am choking. <laughs> it's just a... I don't think it actually kills you. It just makes you choke. You need to put a bag over your head. Yeah. Um, so if they had an, some kind of elevator that came up to here where you could walk out in any direction, I think that would be fine. It could also go further up to the floors above. It also can go down to where you walk into the, um, the, you know, the, the, the docking ring. I think this is the yeah. best position for it. Of course, you lose this command pod, but you can literally just move that over to here and here. Well, and, what, or even, and you can put the emergency ladders on the side of it, just yeah. like you have natural now, exactly. and, it, and it still functions exactly. Yeah. So I think that's all, my the ship. That was really that. freaky. Dyson just walked up behind me, and I saw his eyeballs. <laughs> um, <laughs> So yeah, so this is this is yeah, and and think about all those awkward stairs. Like there's all these stairs that go up here that take up a shit ton of space, and then th there's a really weird thing trying to get to the actual top floor where everyone lives. You've got to go up a ladder or a mini esc uh, a mi mini elevator, and it's not even a a good elevator. It's like it's weird. Like oh, and now the elevators don't the ladders don't work. Seriously, 
Hold it. I can get. I'm trying to get the elevator for you. Oh no! I got the ladder to work them up. So getting into this top floor. Whoa, Bug City. Yeah, I actually kind of think that this is probably the best laid out of all the floors, mainly because there's no no heaps of corridors for no reason. It's just got this one room that leads to everything. That said, though, the elevators on both sides to get up here are just so cumbersome. Where you could, if if you could just have one that come up to here, like and maybe move this turret back. And there's like a mini... So the elevator would be where the turret is, but then if you had it one step back, like a couple of meters back that way, it'd be fine. I think it just needs some things moved around. A bit of love, like... Um, I do agree with you, though. This top floor seven, is actually seven. really well laid out. Yeah. So it's... it Of the floors, it's the best one laid out. Um, I just think an elevator from the top floor to the bottom would make it a lot easier to navigate, too. Um, whoa, bug city, bug city... Come on, come on. All right, I'm going to do the jump trick. Nope. Uh, no! This guy is like a total... Wow. But yeah, this is actually a really good deal for what you get. It is. It's a ship you'll <laughs> use every day of the week. Walking around in it, it's not as bad as i remember but mm. i think you're right this was this was a pre-elevator ship interior yep. and it would benefit a lot from that it was also the it was also the the first truly large ship after the constellation and the retaliator like i remember remember all the videos when it came out oh we've done this huge ship like because it was massive they had to make new pads for it now obviously it, it scales in comparison to things like the Retal the reclaimer and the, the the first capitals like came ahead and stuff like that but it still feels large because of all these corridors. You can always see all these things that Osiris was talking about before with these ladders. You walk past and you just get stuck on them. And the lag is not helping today at all. So I'm going to get it out of this death trap before I can... Before I'm, stuck I can... In, I'm stuck on a ladder. No one cares about you. Shut up. Uh, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. Um, so obviously the ships that are not here are the ones that we need to talk about now so we've got all the hull series the endeavor and am i missing anything the freelancer variants that oh we've be kind of, we and... kind of talked about those because the freelancer here i'm talking about the ones that don't have any representation whatsoever yeah yeah so, so the hulls the endeavor yeah so there's obviously a lot of holes from a to e um it really comes down to what you're doing uh, we were talking about this a fair bit before the show, like, um, uh, Dyson brought up, oh, should I get a whole E? And my whole thing with the, the take on the whole E is it's really designed for org movement, I, uh, unless you're going to strictly stay in safe space, um, which I think limits what it can be d to be done with it. Right. I think you could The operating farm... cost will probably make it prohibitive unless you're loading the entire... Well, I just think you're going to need so many things to defend it. And, 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 and you're not going to just be able to go to a planet and go, give me everything you've got, because it, that thing holds so much stuff that, you know. Yeah. I, 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 the only one I can see is like an org that makes all their own resources, fills the thing to the brim. You're going to need multiple hull A's or B's to fill it, and then transport it with a massive escort to the other side of the universe. You will make a shit ton of profit, no doubt, but it's going to be a shit ton of work. And you're going to need, mo like, having all those people online to do that is, is a mammoth task in itself um, mm. where something like a whole C won't need as many people a whole B you can do it on your own and you can go you, you can go down a planet that's the other thing the like, only... you're gonna have with a whole E you're gonna have to have ships to unload it or you're gonna have to sell it a port and they are gonna want to cut to make to turn a profit themselves so you're gonna cut it all the way across the universe and just before you get there you're gonna Lose a bit of the profit. <coughs> so that's my my take on the whole E is I, I, I question some of the stuff, I guess. I think a whole B is a better freelancer than any of the freelancers. Yep, agreed. So there's, some, there's definitely some ships in here that are just older that need some love. Can't shit me ass in chat. How are you going to be able to defend the Endeavour? Um, hide it in a nebula that's poisonous. That'll be fine. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I, I think I, I, I've, I've, we were talking about that too a little bit before the the show. I think it's kind of going to be like a little mini city thing where a lot of people go to it to get stuff. So you're either going there to upgrade your stuff with the science type thing. You're going to visit the hospital. You're going to um, grow some crops, drug lab, all that type of thing. So I think endeavors are going to be quite an interesting um, ship. I was so tempted today to buy that master set. I sat there for a good hour and I mm. ran every possible type of prediction thing through my head I could think of. And I came, what I ended up coming down to was I started to treat them like fighters, as in they are small modular pieces that are going to be relatively cheap to earn in game. And rather than spend a thousand dollars and getting all these little modules, I'm better off just buying another really big <laughs> ship, aka Hammerhead Polaris, as Idris or something like that, and because that is going to be more bang for my buck in the long term. It's going to be worth more when it comes into the game. Where if I buy all these little modules, they're only going to, they're not really going to increase in value, and that's kind of where I sit with the endeavor at the moment. I think you're great to I buy the whole. I did pick up the master set, and I mm -hmm. think after you mentioned that to me earlier, you convinced me that it's a better idea to earn those in game so yeah. I'll, melt, I'll end up melting that and following your advice yeah the... and you, you could put that towards another big ship an idris or yep. something like that because i'm half expecting um like not tomorrow but the next day when they put all four ship you know the put all the ships back up i'm pretty much expecting that they're going to put out another wave of stuff um especially mm -hmm. with the complaints about what happened about the first one um if people don't know they only put out one wave of idrises at prime US time, nobody else from around the world, as in the other three sections of the globe, was able to. Yeah. Well, but it just it brings back the issue of the entire way they do it is horrible because mm. not only do you have to do I'll... this massive F5 battle, but they don't put it around the world. It's... I don't see why they're trying to. Put artificial scarcity on something that is going to naturally fix itself in game yeah. by crew allotments because yep. people, all these people are going to find, oh, well, yeah. I don't have all the people for this capital ship. Just yeah. let it sort itself out in game and don't feed the gray market price gouging. I, I'm actually surprised they didn't do stresses of interest like they did for the Kraken. I thought, I thought, finally, they've let their lesson. <laughs> but no. Merchantman, hands down, Lee. Merchantman. It, it, you can do uh, cargo with it. You can go down to Merchantman uh, or Endeavor. Yeah. That's a that's a really hard call. I, I actually I don't think you can make that call yet, mate. We don't like, like out of out of both ships, right? We know a bit about the Merchantman. We know even less about the Endeavor. Like they've also stated the modules that are there, they will be more modules in the future. <clears throat> and we don't know any of science gameplay at all, right? Um, it, it is the most modular <laughs> ship in the game. That there tells you it's got a really insane value. Well, here's the issue I have, with that, <clears throat> and I'm just going to say this. Yeah. It's the, the crew requirements, in my personal opinion, are what's going to make it really uh, the big difference because a merchantman, yes, you need some people to crew it, mm -hmm. But overall, you can do cargo runs and safe space with probably relative ease compared to an Endeavor, which is probably going to require quite a few people just to be able to run it, regardless of what you got. Let, let, let me put it to you this way. Um, we know the Banu's increased in size. This is most likely an increase in size as well. But the, the, the thing that, that I think will, will get you here is the gameplay. Now, the Merchantman, you, you're selling stuff, you are cargo hauling. Then you look at the Endeavor. Every time you change a module, the gameplay changes. So you tell me, what's you going to get more value out? What are you going to use more? What are you going to be playing with more? And it's easily the Endeavor because it's just got more gameplay in it. Yeah. It's just that simple. If you simple. get bored of flying around as a hospital, you put on your, radio, your big telescope dish. Now you're an experience. You get bored of that, you put in something else and you become a farmer. Yep. So, in, in my book, it's the Endeavor. Um, obviously, you're going to have to work for those modules at the beginning. Um, but that, that's... 
you know, it, it, that's only if you're going to get one. But honestly, Lee, they're both fantastic ships. And especially after what we saw about the Defender yesterday, whew, amazing. I think we're going to... Um, I think the, the Banner Merchant is going to look awesome. <coughs> um, ben, uh, the Orion got scaled up in size. Sorry, Eddie said that, actually. The Orion got scaled up in size and capacity as well, didn't it, from its original draft? Yes, it did, and I think it's got ginormous. And we were surprised last year it didn't actually increase in price. Um, but it did this year, finally. Um... Yeah, it's almost javelin size, uh, Ben. They got huge. Um, anything else you guys want to talk about? You've both gone quiet on me. Hello, am I alone? Oh well, no, you're, you're not here. alone. I will say though, just having a base endeavor is actually really good because it is cap. It still says on the website cap ship, and I'm just thinking. By the way, what yeah. I just said before about the endeavor between the Banner Merchant Man, don't ever let me stop you getting a ship that you want to get. If you like the Banner Merchant Man more like um, Dyson does, then get the Banner Merchant Man. I'm just talking globally or generalistically what you get more bang for your buck. I hope that makes sense. So don't ever let me say, no, that ship's shit. I'm just telling you what's better in a general purpose sense. I hope that makes sense to everyone. Well, keep in mind what you can do during the sale pick up a uh, Endeavor, melt it, and then go and uh, get, uh, get the, the Banu Merchant. Yeah, so what what he's saying there in essence is that you can put a little bit of money aside every month and eventually buy that ship back, which is a very good idea. So or use general, credits to buy it back, yeah, buy so back which, token. And that goes both ways. So you can you can either get the Endeavor melted or the Banu and melt it and then get the other <coughs> one, Lee. So that's probably a really good idea, actually. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, Lee, I've got both of them. So um, I will say, <coughs> get that. I would recommend melting, having the uh, Endeavor melt only for the reason that the Banu Merchant Amendment will be out way sooner. Mm. Perhaps a year from now. What, what's a unit from now? Sorry, I missed that. I was reading something. <coughs> the Banu Merchantman for it could be out as soon as we from now. But the Defender yeah. is going to be out Q1, and then that team is going to the the Merchantman. Yeah, I I would probably expect it to be early 2020. Um, oh, I do want to stay before we forget. I forget what's up with the whole E being limited now. Like that's. That's kind of weird. I think I think it's for similar reasons we mentioned. I think they know that they don't want to have a shit ton of them in the verse because people are buying them based on the sheer amount that they can just haul heaps of shit. But people haven't thought through the gameplay, um, and there's so many things when you start to think through. Like I was saying, like you're gonna actually have to have whole B's or whole A's just unload these things to planet, and. Um, because they can only go through the largest wormholes, it also limits the pathing they've got to go, so they need more escorts, they, they're going to have to travel further, um, like, and you start to question things like, am I better to get you know, a couple of whole Cs than get one, one E, because the whole C can go through you know, a smaller jump point or whatever. Do you, and I don't know if that information I gave is correct, I'm just saying you got, need to start looking at other ships uh, because yeah, it's, it's, it's much so limited. Than the SEM yeah. rating. Yeah, exactly. And and the sheer the, and the, the speed of it and the number of people you need to cover it and it'll only be able to go into safe space because well because as soon as you take it into to non sex space, it's going to be a prime target. Like it's going to get eaten alive by pirates. Yeah, if your whole org <laughs> is required to move this thing and protect this thing, another pirate org is going to go. Wow, that's a mighty tasty freaking treat over there. We just have to take out all of those ships, and we get not only do we get whole E, but we get all the cargo on it, you know. And I, I reckon we get a lot of people <laughs> like detonating their ship just to piss the pockets off. Um, so, well, I, I actually would say in that type of situation, what would happen? Would they would destroy all the other ships and say, "Hey, give me some of your cargo," just to, because that would keep them from detonating the ship. Because if you give the person an option even after you subdued them to say, hey, look, let's be reasonable here. You could lose everything, or you give us 25% of it 
fifty percent, and you still at least got something. It's funny you mention that. There's people in Eve that refuse to, ne to to negotiate with pirates, and the pirates would just sit there and give say, give us you know half the pro like like just under the pro the cost of your new ship or something like that, and they'd just say, no, nah, I'll buy a new ship, no, nah. because because their whole thing was. In the it's in the best interest of the pirates too, because yeah. the friggin' U Navy will show up by the time you're halfway unloading, done unloading that. Yeah, um, be out of there. Well, and, and the other, like, but but a lot of people prefer to buy a whole new ship in Eve because then the pirates get nothing. And so if they keep doing it, eventually people get bored and they don't do pirates anymore because they can't afford to. So every time someone gives into the pirates and gives them money, they're actually reinforcing the pirates to keep doing it. It's well, really interesting. It, it, it actually reflects a lot of um, worldviews. It's kind of interesting. Anyway. Well, I'd like to say, like, in a game, depending on how long it takes you to earn a ship, like, it may be better just to hand over a little bit. Mm. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. A um, couple more things from chat. I think we're going to wrap up in a minute, guys, just letting you know. So if you've got any questions, yeah. now would be the time to ask. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, Black Dream Hunk is a bit like myself. I own a misc, however, I was looking forward to the Freelancer de. Yeah, we were talking about that before. I think it's the best Freelancer. Uh, Lee says, thank you for the answer, and don't worry, you didn't turn me away from the merch man. However, our grid has convinced me that this morning to melt my Phoenix and any other non-LTI ships for that matter. Yeah, hell. Expect this is the time of year to do it, guys. If you do not have LTI tokens, buy the Arrow as an LTI token and upgrade back to those ships. 100% what you should be doing. The only thing that's going to come into fact, obviously, is the increased cost because some of the prices of ships have gone up. But um, LTI is not pivotal. So if you are going to pay an extra 100 bucks to get LTI, you really should start to question your sanity. All it is, at the end of the day, I'll break it down. When I interviewed Chris Roberts, man, four years ago now, he told me that basically whatever the ship, a quest that is equivalent to that ship, one quest, would probably be all you need to use to pay for a whole month's insurance. So that's not very much work. That's like, you know, half an hour of work to cover the insurance for an entire month. So it's it's... It's not expensive. I think what LTI is at the end of the day, and YouTube boys can correct me if you think I'm wrong, is peace of mind. It's peace of mind, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's peace of mind, and to be fair, 72 months is pretty much lifetime insurance, especially because it's time that you're playing, not time, not this yeah. like, oh, you logged in once, let's start counting 72 months. It's no, you logged in once, there's one day. Yeah. Logged in again. And. And also, when you think about it, LTI really is only useful for the people that have, in my opinion, really large fleets. Yep. Because I also think it's, it's going to be hard to keep up with um, on ships that are used very regularly. And and uh, so I actually think it'd be really good for pirates, believe it or not, uh, something like a Cutlass, because it's going to pop a lot. <laughs> so you want to get it back a lot. Yeah. Um, but but as soon as you do anything to modify that ship, you're going to have to pay for the entire assurance again. So you put a different gun on it, you have cargo on it, anything like that, you have to pay for the insurance again. So. But honestly, there's probably going to be different levels of insurance in the game because they were talking about like gear. Remember that uh, one uh, video they had where they're talking about like the different levels yep. of insurance? They did. And like gear insurance or very specific cargo insurance, so you may not have to go full comprehensive either. Yep. So there's there's a lot of wait and see in this game with everything. We can you can only speculate to a certain point. So that's basically it. I think they may have changed the um, the seventy two month insurance thing so that I think now it does start counting down whether or not you're online, but. Either way, 72 months is a long time to be covered by insurance. 72 months. Oh, yeah. my. Yeah. Uh, um, what does that work out into years? Is that six years? Uh, six years. 40. Yeah, six years. Yeah. Um, that's, so okay. that's, that's, you know, they're expecting this game to run for at least 10 years. So, so, so most of your gameplay experience, and if you're smart, you're saving up money anyway for your insurance. Um, GL Cannon actually mentioned several times that there might be different types of insurance lengths and stuff. 
but the last we heard is that it is it, it is only when you're playing. That is the last thing we heard, and I can't remember. Was it earlier this year? Or was it last year? I can't remember, but it's been a while. Um, but, yeah. I'm sure it'll come up again. These things always tend to creep up again um, after a certain amount of time someone asks the question again. So there'll definitely well, be an update I would to the insurance. Flesh some of that stuff out a little bit earlier because I know there aren't because it's a big marketing thing. LTI is huge, and but it it would just be nice to know what in the world their plans are and have a little bit more set in stone there. Oh come on, this is CIG we're talking about. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a waiting game very much. Yeah, one yeah. So it, no, I think I think they've kind of realised that a lot of people want want lifetime insurance. I, look, I'm 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 of the book. Like I've been here since the beginning, and there the, there was only what thirty five thousand of us in the beginning. Um, I, I'm of the the fact that any time you spend money, it should come with LTI. I, I just think that's the simplest fix for everyone. Um, mm -hmm. And and I can see why they don't make ships available all the time because it makes that would hype. It, it, it makes hype and it works for marketing. So I can see that's going to never work. But the thing that would simplify everything and all this insurance bullshit is this, they just gave LTI to everything. Um, it, it would kill the black market overnight. It's gone. So there's no extortion. People, you know, there, there are people that desperately want that ship that they've created because of the hype, but it's not available. So they go into a black market alley and get screwed over by someone. You know what I mean? So... Oh. The, the black market is a creation of their own marketing department. Well, the thing is, they would be making more money directly if they just sold ships outright. Or even if they didn't want to give every ship LTI, at least like all, all ships bought Warbond get LTI regardless. And not like Warbond, Warbond, but just... I just hey, think I think if you're different. spending I think if you're spending money, it should come with LTI. It's that simple. Because, I, I, like, can you imagine the first person that say he's got his seven months insurance or whatever and he's uh, and he's used to his seven months so he just doesn't insure his ship and then the first time he goes out and the insurance has run out and the ship pops right like yeah, i'm not I saying it's i'm not gonna I'm, I'm gonna say it's probably gonna be a stuff up on his part but it's gonna happen and someone's gonna be really pissed mm. that they spent x amount of dollars let's just say 300 bucks i'd be annoyed as shit let's know? call it what it is though at this point you're investing in a a yeah. project that is still in development yep. and we all understand at this point that it's very far along it's not the dark days when it, maybe this game would have failed three or four mm. years ago oh, but if you are an investor at this stage you're right the very least they could do is give you lti on mm. every single purchase yep. period i think i think i think that would give everyone peace of mind even if to the point um the other thing they were stating too with the LTI, because LTI is always a hot topic. You notice how every time we bring it up, we always go into this rant. Um, is yeah. they did state that there will be, um, even if you buy a ship and it doesn't have LTI, you won't truly lo lose it. Do you remember when they talked about this like six months yeah, ago? Yeah, but the thing is, it, that could easily be changed. So what it will probably mean, yeah, it may change, but what it will probably mean, it might be something like um, <laughs> you'll be able to buy it back at half the price or something like that, you know. Um, but like, ideally, I think the easier fix is just to give everyone LTI, um, unless they've come up with well, another or one. maybe, well, it'd be kind of interesting if, if they didn't want to irritate people with LTI, mm. give everyone LTI, but have the other one be like gear LTI. So any gear changes automatically gets covered. Do you guys feel like going for a fly while we talk? Cause this has gone longer than I thought. So we've just been standing here like 15 minutes of these two idiots in front of me so you're getting boring so let's go let's go it's almost forward. past my bedtime all right should we wrap up then instead you guys can go flying if you want yeah, uh, gonna... i'm gonna test out this uh white razor while i'm at it all right um all right i'm gonna ask for last questions in chat and then if i don't get anything in the next minute or two we'll wrap it up here but um yeah, definitely some really good choices industrial-wise when it comes to MISC. Oh, I think there will definitely be a fair few ships purchased today. Um, just remember that kind of sell your fighters mentality. Um, anything that kind of falls into that, uh, the, the same price as a fighter is generally going to be really easy to get in-game. Um, and 
Go ahead. I like to point out that the console, if you look at the constellation Phoenix in the shipyard, it's actually fairly cheap. Yeah. I I, I think they know that they've kind of stuffed up with the Phoenix. I I never brought a Phoenix because I knew it was too, like I I have this thing for luxury ships. Like my hate is my the manufacturer I hate is Origin because the ships don't other than three twenty five A they don't have any appeal. Like the, the and, and and there's always a better option. So like you get the six hundred I with the Explorer module. Why the hell would you buy a Carrick? You know, like um, y yes, the Carrick now does cost more. But at the time when I brought my Carrick, it was a roughly the same price. I think it's fifty. It was fifty dollars more expensive when I brought it. <coughs> um, yeah. So I, I don't like Origin, but that's because I just I, I think it's a a, a form over function ship for me. All right, yeah, so it's an alien tax on a human ship. They yeah. also waste so much actual practical space on it. Like, I understand it's supposed to be luxury, but there's it needs to be more performance luxury so people actually can appreciate it. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I'm just reading what um, GL Cannon said about his uh, 600i. Yeah, buying stuff and melting it is fine because you're going to always buy it back. Just remember if the, cre the price increases, though, why it's melted, it also means you have to pay more when you buy it back. Um, oh, I did not know that. Yeah. Um, yep. I thought it was whatever you no, it, in it, it. In, no, it increases. It if increases. you melt it, if you have it in your inventory, you the price increase doesn't. Doesn't doesn't affect it, but if you have it in your buyback, the price increases. Um, right. It didn't used to, but now it does, um, and that was about two, or, <laughs> two, two, two or three years ago now. Um, I own a Phoenix. Carrick has a med bay. I love Origin. Okay, he's just making statements at me now. Right. Um, yeah, I Phoenix. We just think is in a bad place. Carrick is a really great all round ship. That's why it's probably the most popular ship in the game at the moment. Um, Will you be able to buy in-game for a set amount or will you need a good standing with Origin? I think you'll be able to buy it in-game pretty readily available. And the way they talked about Origin on this week's video, they basically said it's the every like the the domesticated manufacturer, didn't they? They kind of said that it's almost an everyman. The most just, civilian. Yeah, the most civilian. I laughed when they said that. I was like, what? It's like this pompous... Yeah, I don't think... I think Origin's a pretty common manufacturer. Um... 123 says, from Origin, you are only going to make a lot of money from them if you have the 890 jump, or 890J. Um, I am in the exact same position I am with every Origin ship, even including the 890J. I just, like, fundamentally, the gameplay of the 890J is transportation, much like the human transportation of the Gemini Starliner. And was no, the jet, what's it called? Star, uh... What's the name of that ship? The Star. Ship? Star. Li yes. Star. Starliner? Starliner, I think it is called. Yeah, that's the Starliner. Yeah, yeah, the Crusader Gemini Starliner. That is very <laughs> similar gameplay, but you're only transporting one or two people. So basically, you're a glorified butler waiter that's going to move people through space. I just... I don't see the fun in that. I, Sorry, I don't. Um, yeah, it's got like a mini shopping ball, mall on board, but... I think you're playing a premium for a premium a premium ship, but that doesn't come with premium gameplay. Um, and at the end of the day, and this is a game, um, and it's the same. Yeah, I just I don't get it. Maybe I'm missing something. So yeah, um, I could see it used as an exploration ship. Uh, um, Black Dream Hunk is saying he sees the 890J as a um, as an exploration capital ship, but here's the question I chuck back at you, man, Carrick. I can t I can get like three Carricks for almost the same price. You know, almost. I re like the original price of Carrick, I think it was three fifty. Um, so that would put it at just over a thousand dollars, and the eight ninety jumps. What? You, know, you definitely still get two Carricks. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not sold on the 890 jump. I'm not sold on any Origin ship. I. It's. Yeah. V90. If anything, it's it's just a status symbol. Yeah. I I actually like it. It's just it's 
it, it's impractical. You're not. I don't see it as a real money maker. And I it, see it as a. I, I look at my cool ship. Gameplay is a topic that's come up a bit today because we were talking before the show, and um, I was talk, talking to Osiris about the Starfarer because I was like, you really need to look at because he's like, oh, it's ugly, but you really need to look at it because it's going to earn a lot of money. And he's like, well, the gameplay is not appealing to me. Well, again, well, then I kind of go, well, well, then don't get it, you know. Um, but flying through the clouds. Yeah, but but if you want a, a money earner, it, it's going to make a lot of money. And, and, and that comes back to mining too. You might not like mining or, you know, I think probably the, the most interesting of the three main professions is salvage. Because it's got a little bit of exploration in it, a little bit of resource gathering, you know. So, yeah. Possibly some combat. You find some xenomorphs on the derelict. Do we think that there will be an Anvil capital ship in the future from Can't Shoot Me? I think it's possible, and I, I know Dice and I have talked at length about a third Corvette, um, because you kind of look at the Polaris and its torpedoes, which is anti-capital, then you've got the anti-fighter, which is the hammerhead. You need something that's kind of anti-large ship, so I'm talking around constellation size. So I think there is a there is potentially room there for a larger ship. I don't know what it would be. Would it be like a missile-based well, one. I always thought about rail, a more railgun base. Like, imagine. I still say, think the expanse. <laughs> like, you... see that? Yeah, I saw that. Is that you? No. So, so... Oh, that's awesome though. That's like the uh, the Carthor Isles yesterday. That was funny. Whoa. Yeah, I think I think <laughs> Dice has just seen it. Oh dear. But yeah, I was saying, uh, think the expanse, where you have uh, basically a ship ram. That's basically a giant railgun built between a ship. Mm. That would actually be a rather interesting one. I'm just saying, something like that would be cool, or a beam weapon, because they now have beam weapons. Mm. That's also I mean, a possibility so- as well. That No, that is entirely a possibility. An anvil ship mm-hmm. with beam weapons. I can see that. The, the possibilities are... For, like, Let's be honest, they can pretty much make any ship they want. I think a lot of the time, like from a game design perspective, the way that the designers would be working, and I only know this because of my past, they'd be looking to fill gaps first before um, creating just a cool ship. So you got to look into professions that are uh, that are missing. So you know, like our medium miners, our medium salvage, etc., um, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Um, so yeah, I basically like the, the ships I gathered first were all utility-based ships. And then I got a few things for fun. And that's basically my fleet in a nutshell. Um, There's a lot of people hating my comments about VIP. (laughs) About VIP ships. Um, Yeah, I'm I'm just not sold on the game. It's a waste of money. I just don't see the... Like, how is transporting one pompous jackass across the, the, the universe fun? I just... You're basically, it's a, a, like, and a lot of the or, orig, origin ships say touring. So literally all they are is, if, if you want that really chilled, uh, you know, if you're like a beer and pretzels guy and you just want to relax and fly across the universe, then that's what origin is. That That is what the touring is. It's the same thing with the racing. Like, it, you, you know, it, it'll go up a little bit when you're actually racing, but those ships every hour of the day of the week are an A to B vehicle, which is what touring is. Um, I want some gameplay. I don't know what you guys are like but that's me I, I want some gameplay yeah salvage trade playing the markets and but but i can <laughs> see the stuff every once in a while you know people like to go out in their boat like on a yacht and sailboat and they just like to cruise i think that that's what the origin ships appeal to people that like that so um lee yeah the 325a if they had a a, a 625 I or whatever for the 600 series, it'd be popular as hell. I, th- I think the 325A is one they'd love to roll back on and not have it exist, but I think it's probably the most useful of the Origin ships, quite frankly. Um, I don't understand why they don't have more premium com- combat ships. It's, it probably is a bit of a juxtaposition, though. Um, but then again, in real life, they have, you know, stretch limos that are built like tanks. So... All right, I think we'll wrap it up there because everyone's sounding pretty tired. 
Um, yep. Anything you boys want to add, or we done for today? Uh, tomorrow is the finale. It is the finale. I'm... Um, I'm th- I seriously feel like uh, we're going to see something from either Consolidated Outlands or Crusader because they definitely seem to be pushing Crusader this year. Mm-hmm. And But there's no- nothing mentioned in the list. There's no announcement list. Yeah, so. I don't think and we're going to see a new concept. Yeah, yet. last year, they every announcement, they had a thing there for it. I don't think we w- would. That said, the shit that came out yesterday, uh, hotly debated here between a lot of the info runners here, um, Hayes got back to me and he thinks it's a real winner. Um, where I like it a lot as well. Yeah, I, I like it, but I still don't think it's as good as the Defender. Um, and I think it's going to have agrees a you know, advantage in the upcoming flight model changes. Agreed. It's going to continue to have the six degree of freedom operation, unlike everything else that's going to have new, more Newtonian yeah. flight you agreed with me, didn't you? And Algra, didn't you, Dyson? We used to think the Defender's a bit better. Yes, because the Banu uh, Defender not only has the Xeon engines, but it also has Tavaran shields, and it's a smaller... It, it, the way its profile is set, it just feels to me like it's less vulnerable to having its wing shot because it's such a big, wide target. Um, It's the last day of the announcements... Uh, after that, all the ships go back up for sale, uh, Misfit. So it, it's the end of the announcements, I guess you could call it. Then, then we're going to have four days of um, everything available. I also think if you're looking to pick up packages for friends or whatever, that's when they'll st- start selling some really cheap packages like Auroras and Mustangs. Um, traditionally, they've gone down to as cheap as $25, which is goddamn cheap. Um so if you want to get some people in the star system, I know people that have gone out and they've literally bought like 500 bucks worth of just Aurora packages and they give them all away because they just want more people to play this game. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, Cannon's just talking about melding his modules. Uh, we were talking about that earlier, Cannon. Those modules are going to be really cheap to get, man. I wouldn't buy any of them. I would just have the default hull, earn some money, and get the modules in game. They're going to be cheap. Like, think about it. Like the most, like mo- one of one of the modules I know is the biodome. It's a hundred bucks. Look at a ship that's a hundred bucks, and see how long it's going to take you to earn that. Like I'm, what's the price of an M50? Can anyone tell? Hundred bucks. M50 is like, uh, it's a hundred bucks. Yeah, and this was like seventy-one thousand um, credits or whatever, back in the live st- when they did the live stream back in uh, CitizenCon. So, long story short, can I actually rent this today? Insufficient credits, but it costs sixty-five thousand. There you go. So it's six hundred and fifty thousand. Which is akin to sixty-five dollars, basically. Um, so, you do the math. I think you're far better not to buy modules. I, I, I've started treating modules like fighters, and they're not gonna. You're not gonna get your bang for your buck. And I'm. I want everyone to get their bang for the buck. But if you like those modules and you really want those modules, don't let me stop you from getting what you want. Um, I'm just trying to get you the best dollar value for everything that you buy in this game. Keep in mind, I would say the big caveat there is if that's the only thing you have. Yeah. And if like, you're on the fence and you want to think about it, you can get a Starfare Gemini to Endeavor CCU for ten bucks and just hang on to it for a couple. Of years. Yep. <sighs> What's the Discovery class uh, Dream Hunt? Because that's the other one. That was the one I couldn't remember earlier when we were talking about them. What are the modules that come with the Discovery class? If you could tell me, please. Let's get the telescope, I think. All right. Because I know there's one that's the hospital yeah. one. Then there's the one that is the that's farm the one. And then that one's the one with the telescope, you reckon? Yeah, I think the farm is the Olympus or Olympic or whatever it is. The uh, Hope is the Endeavor one. The Endeavor Hope is the hospital, and then the uh, Discovery class is the exploration. Crap. I didn't see which hangar that ship was at. <laughs> I did it again. 
do you remember the guy who did the thing? There, there is a actually ship distance, so you can actually look at the distance chart. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just gonna out. spawn another ship and then spawn that one again. That's the only way I know how to fix it. Um, because I'm trying to read chat at the same time. Yeah, th there's a really important point from Misfit. The twenty dollar Aurora was twenty thousand, uh, two hundred thousand credits, and the forty dollar Dragonfly was seventy thousand credits. <laughs> so yeah. I'm actually shocked at that. Actually, because <laughs> like, oh, yeah. So you so got new vehicles. Yeah, you got to start to realize the value of things, and and and, and it's great to have things now, but you got to have a plan. Like all those, I feel sorry for all the people who have like temporal cyclones and everything. <laughs> it's a cool thing, but buy it in game. Yeah, so you know, start to realize there's going to be an in-game value and there's a real-world value, and that they're not lining up. Um, it'd be nice if they explained what's actually. Oh, going there you on go. The, the discovery time. class is a science ship, so it probably does come with the um, the telescope and the general science and the general research pods. Five. Oh, yeah, I, look, I, all I ever try and do on this channel is basically, when I, when I make recommendations for stuff is to try and save people money. So, that, that's my thought process, and, and like what we were saying between the Banu Merchant Man and the Endeavor, um, they're the same price, but my recommendation comes off that you're going to get more gameplay out of one over the other. That's not to say that the Banu isn't the best cargo ship in the game, because quite frankly, I think it is. Um, well, it it's slightly short of a whole C, but it it has easy in and out of planets with, with the way the thrusters in this design. It that's just a big plus there. Let alone it, at, from the way they're making it sound, it probably has a hangar or some way yeah, of docking a defender with a defender. Yeah, I I really question a lot of that stuff because if they make it unique to the defender then it means you can't use any other ship with it other than a Defender. So I, don't, I, 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 don't, I kind of... I, I kind of size-wise. Yeah, the I, well, I'm, I'm hoping it's more like, like it hangs off the side or something really cool. But I don't think they'll do that just based on the fact that it means you can only use Defenders or you've got to give up cargo space so they can land in the cargo bays, you know? So... <coughs> I'm just curious what will actually sit in a uh, in the yeah. actual. There you go. So the Endeavor uh, one is posted there. Uh, general science, service equipment, and crew. Okay. All right. Is that actually up for sale now? No, he's, and then that, this very next post is then. Oh no, they're, sorry, that's someone else says it, but they said they're not selling the Discovery or Hope. They're only selling the uh, master set. Wow, I'm, that took a long time. I'm actually a little disappointed because I think that's actually a good deal just to get just like one module just just mm. to start you off. Yeah, but um, if you're like me and you've got other ships, I wouldn't bother. But if you because you can use the other ships to earn money for it. But if you've only got the Endeavor, then yeah, it, pro it makes a lot of sense to get some. Of right. I don't think it does anything by itself. Yeah. Um, you could probably use the hab as a, like a little bit of a cargo hauler, maybe. I don't know. I've never really. Yeah, well, the big thing for me, like best. the best module on it, is the hangar because they make it sound like you can hold like two cutlasses. Yep. And I'm like, if you can hold two cutlasses, that's like that's four or five arrows. Hangar. Yep. I can that's... honestly see the cutlass and it being used as a drug hauler mule thing quite frequently. You know, if you have, like, the, the one I had up until I m melted them this morning was I had a biodome, I had a uh, general research, and I had a, had a hanger. So I was going to make drugs in the biodome, process them in the in the research lab, and then basically sell them via people being able to land and pick them up. That was my whole plan. Um, but I've melted them all because I'll just learn them in-game. Um, and I've saved myself a bunch of cash. And I, it was $170 I ended up with. Um, from the modules of stuff I melted and I'll put that towards something else um, and I'm possibly looking at uh, a redeemer at the moment 
Not a bad choice because we have no clue what it'll turn into. Yeah, I, I, well, I, I'm thinking it's going to be quite attractive as a little combat vessel. Um, once it's done, and if it turns out to be shit, I'll just wrap it again. And I'll turn it into something else. And I've got one back from when it was originally pitched, so it's a package as well. So, uh, an extra $15 over the default, and I've got another package. Man, we got some serious lag issues here today. I don't know if anyone else is watching me play here. This is not me being derpy. This is the game. Don't believe him. He's just making excuses. He's just being derpy. Welcome. Your journey begins now. All systems operational. So I'm going to go for a little bit of a fly. Um, fly safe. Yeah. Not cleared for lift off. So what made you get rid of your misery, one, two, three? I'm curious. And I mean, well, you call it the miss, I call it the misery. Um, because I think it's going to cause a lot of misery, that gun. But it's actually a ship I used to own. No, it seems to be just a pure gunboat now. But they have, have said that you could use it to escort dropships down to the planet. I, and that, that's why it appeals to me. It, it seems like a mini hammerhead in, in a lot of ways. Um, in, in, in a weird way, it kind of makes it a little bit easier than the hammerhead because the biggest problem with the hammerhead at the moment is obviously the sheer crew count is insane. You're going to need well, to just, have seven people to crew it. Just imagine just two hammerhead turrets on like a Connie, like a dedicated ship, just melded on there. There you go. That'd be kind of cool. There we go, alright. Graphical bugs still have the wings up, don't know why. Alright, so this is a rare ship that you don't see too often anymore. Uh, the Amiga. This is from oh, wow. AMD um, promotion. It's basically the Gamma, but it's red. So this is the only racing ship I own, and the only reason I own it is because it's red. Tell you another little pet peeve, I really wanted to be able to fly on that archway, but you can't. Like, as soon as you get next to it, it has a ah, heart attack. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I. So Jason's asking, is seven people really insane for the, for the hammerhead? Seems like it warrants it, no. Um, yes. It's just it, tough to get that many people together at yeah. the same time. Like, that's one of the things we question a lot of time here, because you look at any other MMO, it's really hard to get people to do the same thing. Like, people just want to do their own thing. It's just a natural human thing. Um, <coughs> I just... Like, even now, I've ne like we have an org, and we, we've tried to get an org together to fully man a hammerhead, and it's just hard to get people there that have the, the same time to link up. Um, well, the issue is the same time, and then if any bugs that happen or computer crashes, trying to get in the same server... It's the just kid starts screaming. Yeah, all that type of thing. Real life intervenes, all that stuff. So, and also, everyone has the capital ship. Who what, who does it, Who wants to be relegated to pure shields? Yeah, and and if you look at the professions on other ships, so let's take the Polaris because that that's probably the closest one to it, right? The Polaris has all these different crew stations, so you know all that stuff. When you look at the crew stations for the Hammerhead, you've basically got turrets, engineer, pilot, co-pilot. That's it. So most of the people on that ship, their only job they can do is a turret gunner. Where if you get bored on a Polaris, you can just switch. You kind of can't do that on the Hammerhead because you've only got the three rolls you can flick between. So yeah, and I, I do think when the AI come, Jacobs just mentioned we need AI to take over most of the crew count, and he's one hundred percent correct. Like once once um, AI comes on board, you you're literally gonna go down to probably three crew on that ship. Well, I see a lot of people, because they want to fly their own ship, I actually see AI filling it still playing with your friends because you're going to have, like, fleets now instead of... Yeah. It's not ideally what they were wanting, but 
like who how many people are going to be wanting not to fly their ship like everyone wants to be the one to fly the ship mm. yeah especially if you're paying hundreds of dollars for it I think, I think we're coming to a tipping point where as a whole Star Citizen has a too many ships problem you know um, I, I know people and I don't know I don't know how to say this without saying it in a rude way so I'm just going to say it but there are people that don't have a lot of friends but they've got a lot of money and they're going to end up being having trying to fly these ships that they've purchased for ridiculous amounts of money that will never have crew in them um, unless they I'm I, this game is going to need a rigorous system for you to find crew. Utterly rigorous. And I think a lot of people, when they first get into the game, if they just have a default package, the, the, the way they're going to make most money is being crew members for others until they get their own ship. But it's like you guys just said, at the end of the day, everyone wants their own ship. They don't want to be someone else's... You know, you hear all the time... Through everyone the street, wants to be Picard. No one wants to be... Uh, Wesley. Yeah. Or Wesley. Well, no, or just, number, just... number two. <laughs> no one wants to. Well, even like number that. one, I mean, seriously, it's not your ship. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm looking for some forest, but they're not showing me any. I'm getting nothing but desert. Um. Oh, I'm going to crash here if I kept reading chat. Whoa! Should, uh, one, one of the moons is actually flyable right now. It's really yeah. hard to find third person. Jeez Louise, I almost died. Oh, we got forest. Great. Yeah. I hate to jump out early, but I have to get up fairly early. To yep, I think we're about to wrap jumping out. About to wrap up. Front. I think we're eight about more minutes. End it. End it on eleven thirty. Just even. Proximity yep. alert. Yeah. Front. Landing I think gear. We'll, um, engaged. Landing. I'm just gonna get complete. out now. I've landed, and we'll wrap it up here for today. Any other questions? Join us on Discord if you think of something. Yeah, I'll look. These guys are going to head off, but I'll I'll definitely jump on our Discord. Discord, geez, it's not in the description yet, but um, yeah, you should be able to find it one of our other videos that is not streamed, a hundred percent. Um, yeah, there's some bugs with this ship still. The wings just don't like to fold down. Oh no, it's meant to fold up when it lands, isn't it? Silly me. Yeah. Yeah. So. As the sun fades, I guess we'll fade as well. So, <coughs> yeah, but this game has definitely come a long way. Just the fact that you can do what you're doing right now. Yeah. Like, and uh, I don't know for, for our non-Australian viewers, this is a hundred percent Australian um, trees and stuff. They are, these are dead ringers of what we have here in Australia. Uh, so, yeah. I think that it's definitely influenced. Um, they call it a, sav a savanna biodome, but savanna doesn't have trees like that. They're Australian trees. We get a lot of them, um, and they do have some eucalyptuses uh, in LA. So I actually think that might be where, why these have turned up in game. They might have copied some from around. All right, enough about boring trees. Thanks for being with us today, guys. We'll see you guys again tomorrow for the finale of the sale. We will do a more comprehensive episode in the days after the sale um, and try and wrap everything up in a nice bundle of CCUs we recommend and stuff like that. Um, I've been Execute. This has been Dyson. He's been Osiris. And we'll catch you guys tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See ya.